Hey guys, today I'm here with Laura Ordeal, mindset mentor, hypnotist, and a professional astrologer intuitive, which is exactly where we're going to hit in the conversation, which is, you know, what we hit in every episode, pretty much. We have, we've had a couple of uh, hypnotherapists on and never an astrologer though. And I feel like now's a really good time to record something in that direction, considering it's Mercury retrograde and we just had this big eclipse. Yeah, I love astrology. It's so fun. And I was uh I was always kind of afraid of it. I I used to love to be um looking at my horoscope and and having fun, but I thought, oh, I could never learn all the stuff that there is to it. You know, I I just thought there's so much. I and so I kind of would stand at the edge of it, you know, peering over like, oh, that's so fun, but afraid to step into it and to go any further with it. And uh, when I found the right person to dive into that with, it, it's been amazing. And it's so incredible how interesting it is and how life-changing it can be to look at a natal chart and uh, see all the amazing things that are there for someone. So it's a lot of fun. It is super complex. Most people don't realize how complex it is. A lot. Most people just think um, astrology consists of your sun sign and that's it. And honestly, that's not even the main sign you should be looking at if you're only going to look at one sign. So you have your, your moon and your rising and your whole entire natal chart and everything interacts with each other. And also a lot of people call crap on it you know they're like that's not real you're you really believe that stuff and I always tell people that it really doesn't matter if you believe it or not uh nonetheless it is a beautiful introspective tool and especially if you're getting ready to do the inner work to heal and move forward and manifest the life that you want, create what you want out of life and, you know, build better relationships and learn about yourself. And, you know, there's so many different directions that we could go with all of this life stuff and doing it better, but people don't know where to start. And a lot of us start with meditation, but we don't even really know where to go in that direction either. And astrology is a good intro tool because it's going to give you something to start with because it's going to give you something to like a direction and a uh, overall theme to look at in your life and dissect and analyze and move forward with it does it really does and it's uh it's so incredible and it's it's a science that's been around for thousands and thousands of years people don't realize that it's it was it, and has been a science for a very long time it's not just a energetic woo thing which i love the energetic woo thing too but but this is something that you you dive in you look at and is there intuition in some of it absolutely yeah i use my intuition when i'm when i'm creating a, a chart and and telling people about it about how certain things connect and why that's important and the sun sign is important it's kind of like the base layer that we came into this world with but it's like trying to say uh, okay well let's let's make a cake and you put the flour in and it's like okay done that's not how it works you know you gotta you gotta add all of the other ingredients in there to get the flavor of who you are and what's important in your life. And it can tell you so much. And the thing that I really love about it is people often, they have parts of themselves that are very um, vibrant or that are a big part of them. And, and it gets shut down, you know, kids from a young age and then even into adulthood, they're told you're too much you know, quiet down, be less of, do this, you know, don't, don't be so loud. Don't be so fidgety. Or they're told you're too sensitive. You need to buck up. You know, you, you need to be different is what they're being told. You need to be different than who you are. And what I get to do when I do a chart for someone is I get to show them that is who you are. And it's absolutely amazing 
because just even looking at the the elements in astrology is so simple and and yet so powerful because if you look at kind of how the charts comprise it has uh, four different elements earth air fire water and it's going to show you you came into this world with an abundance maybe of one or a balance maybe none of one which can mean two things uh, that you're either really good at it and you don't need to anything to amplify it or you really kind of suck at it and you need to put a lot of effort into it and so when we look at the balance of just the elements i can sit and talk to somebody and say you know you have a lot of fire in your chart you are meant to be bold and to stand up and to light the way for so many of us. So many of us need to light our fire off of all the energy that you put into the world. Don't let anyone quiet that or dampen that or tell you it's too much. There are warriors, our pioneers, the people that move forward. And, and it's so important for those people to be out there in the world. And yet they're, they're, they're stomped down, you know, they're, they're, hidden their light because they've been told for so long oh you know you boy you just say the thing don't you or whatever it is in a negative way and so if i get to show them the positive side of it it's so exciting it's so fun people who have water a lot of water in their chart they're pretty incredible yet they're told often you're too uh, sensitive or you're um always in yourself you know you, you kind of hide yourself or, or something like that you know you need to engage more the thing is they're our emotional realm you know they they're the emotional people in our world they're our caretakers they're the people who um if moving in their energy correctly they're our empaths they're the ones that can feel into what somebody might need and especially like scorpio scorpio gets a bad rap oh my goodness, you're so intense, you're so this, you're so that. And yet they go so deep into such beautiful territory. Have you ever seen those pictures where um, the the water scenes where you can see clearly like underneath the water and it, you know, it's so beautiful and you kind of see up above the water and stuff. That's our water signs, especially Scorpio. They can see the, the, the flow, the underflow of life that is there they see life they see death they see all the deep dark things where most of us are kind of up on the surface going eee, it's a little scary it's a little dark down there I, I don't know the others are diving deep especially Scorpio diving deep under there going it's so beautiful it's so interesting and I want to show you what this is and they do if we let them they they do also with water signs, and again, I'm going to say, I use Scorpio because they do get tossed around a lot, but they, um, they feel things at such a different level. If you've ever been at a beach and you've been in the waves, you know, they tumble you around, you know, all around and, but you can learn to navigate them. You can dive under, you can ride a wave in, you know, you can float out until it passes. You, you learn to navigate that. That's what, that's what the water signs are doing, especially Scorpio. Scorpio in this particular instance is navigating emotion at that level. That's the level that they're at, at an emotional realm. The rest of us are over here on the lazy river, cruising along, having a time, maybe a few rapids here and there. And so we're looking going, what's the big deal? What are you so intense about? What are you, what's going on? They're constantly in that state of navigating those waves. Nav you know, so they're, they're bobbing here, going there, diving under, trying to manage that. So yeah, they might hold a little bit more in because there's a lot there. And when they have maybe taken somebody with them and dove down and looked at all these beautiful things in life, they're told, Ooh, you're kind of dark or boy, you're so intense. You know, my goodness. When they're just trying to show us what they see, which is beautiful, beautiful. And, and, you know, the, the cancers of the world, they are hopefully at the empath level, there's kind of a difference. Sometimes people say, I'm so empathic, I'm so empathic, where sometimes they're more sympathic. They, they don't know how to navigate the emotions. They just take it all in. But 
mostly the cancer can tell us, here's how we navigate emotion. Here's how we use it. Here's how we care for the people around us. And they absorb the energy and give when they need to. It's really a beautiful exchange. Is that making sense? Oh, absolutely. I'm loving this so much. And I'm going to, I'm going to prompt you to do earth and um, earth. air as well. Earth. Earth are the ones that are told, hurry up, hurry up. You got to get going, you know, because they're taking their time. They're, they're the ones that will start the story uh, that happened, you know, something happened two months ago and they have to explain all the little parts that go up until the thing that happened yesterday. But all of that is really relevant to them in this story part. So you have to give them time to tell the story, to get through it. Um, they're not going to jump on making a big decision. They're going to take their time. And, and the earth signs are our manifestors and our connectors to the energy of the earth. You know, um, the Capricorn is the one that says, we can do this. We can get things done. Let's work together and they'll lead the way and they'll show us. It's absolutely possible to bring all the big and wonderful things into your life, into reality. And the Taurus will show us how beautiful it is to really bring in the quality in life, to find our sanctuary in our home, to be at that level that says, "Ooh, this feels so good. And Virgo are our are, they're the ones that are so amazing and they will put things in place. They create um, ways of doing things that, that just put it in line. They're the list makers. They're the ones that are the list makers. Check, check, check. Everything is perfect. Let's get the details in play. They're amazing that way. Um, and, and, you know, there's difficult sides to all these, obviously. Yeah, I'm talking about the most wonderful sides of them. And that's the part I want them to see. But those earth signs are our connection to really being in this world and creating the reality that we want. So it's important to value that. And they will show us how to do that in the best ways possible. Air signs. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're so up in your head. You jump from one idea to the next. Can't you ever settle on something? You know, they're, they're the ones reading seven books at one time and, and doing, you know, I happen to be an air sign, so I absolutely get that. Um, but they're also our communicators. They're the ones that are going to do the podcast. They're going to be the journalists. They're going to be the ones that that say the things. They're going to be the one at the party that brings all of the different you know spokes of the wheel together to have the conversation, and it's going to be so interesting. They are also the ones that are that are bringing balance into our relationships libra they are so wonderful and yet they're so cute i love libra they get stuck in the oh i really want a relationship and then they get in a relationship and they're like oh my goodness i need alone time i so need alone time <laughs> because they do they need both and they're showing us about balance balance of being able to be whole in ourselves and be part of a relationship and relationships are everything in our world mm -hmm. we have relationships with ourselves, with um romantic with work with our home with our earth everything is a relationship and then you have uh the aquarians and that the air sign i know aquarius sounds funny to be an air sign but they are and they're the ones that are they're they're like let's fly the freak flag let's be weird and wonderful and, and out there a little bit let's save the world and at the same time let's create all the amazing uh, genius things in terms of uh, technology that will make all of us have life be so much better they are incredible in that and so they all serve that but they get told on the bad side of things you're out here, you know, what are you, in space somewhere? Where's your mind? Why Why can't you concentrate? Why can't you be on this? And I like to show them, you need to be out in space. You need to be bringing the amazing ideas into our life. You are our creators. Bring those wonderful things. I don't care if you, you anchor into, you know, each one. That's not the important part. The important part is to use that energy in the way that was going to benefit all of us. And when we see people doing that, we know it's possible. When we see people in leadership roles, in manifesting, in creating, in, in our earth, we know it's possible. 
So everyone needs to really be using those best sides and the, the bountiful energy that they're given to be in this world in a way that is amazing because it helps the rest of us to live the life that we're meant to live. We all have, we experience all of those every day. We experience all four elements every day. Water is emotion, also physically water. You know, we get up, we get water, we go to the bathroom, we do that. We kind of check in. How are we feeling? We might start by using our communication, our air, talking about it, or listening to something these days. You know, we listen to podcasts, we listen to, to, to whatever, uh, meditation, something like that. Uh, we move into our day, our earth. We get things going. We anchor into our work and what we're doing in this world to manifest the life. And we need the fire energy because that's moving movement, action, doing all of that, bringing things into the energy of being. So they're all incredibly useful and meaningful. There you go. You have to, you have to have the balance. You got to find the balance and knowing what you possess a lot of in your chart can help you find that balance. And I love how um, you were talking about children and how we all start out ourselves. We are born ourselves. And then we become adults and we're like, I have no idea who I am. I've been trying to fit into all of these boxes my whole life. And then we panic and we legitimately can't figure out who we are. And it takes all of this diving into these different modalities to try to peel back layer and layer that we've put on as a mask to the rest of the world in order to figure it out. And then when we do every little layer that we do figure out about ourselves, it clicks and you're like, Oh, turns out I already knew that it was just suppressed. It was just turned off. It was just, uh, alchemized towards something that somebody else liked, you know, for that external validation so that we could be liked by our community, which, I talk in almost every episode is innate. It's something we're born with. We we're born with the desire and urge to be a part of the community because we needed the community to survive for thousands of years. If you were, you know, we're communal creatures and uh, we needed the village or else we wouldn't last very long out in the wild. So. Well, yeah, I mean, our whole experience is not to be here alone. Our whole experience as a human is to be here in relationship and in in communication and connection with everything that's here as a part of our life. And it is important to bring balance. You know, you think about a, a car driving down the road. Uh, I often talk about the elements in terms of those four tires. When you have one that's all pumped up and big and, you know, you're really using that or that's what you're feeling most of, you're going to kind of limp along. Or if you have one that you're not using at all or not engaging with, like a flat tire, you're not going anywhere. You know, you you really need to bring balance to all of them. And it's super simple to do. It's not that you have to, oh, now I have to, you know, oh, I have to bring something special into my life to do that. No, you just do it. You go and you communicate if that's, if, if you need to bring air out in your life, you go, you have a chat with someone, you journal, you, uh, you do a podcast, you do whatever it is to do that. Create the ideas. If you need to bring out earth, go connect with the earth, literally go walk barefoot on the earth changes you physically absolutely changes you physically there's an electronic balance um, that we have in our in our body that connects with the earth and it changes it mm -hmm. uh, if you can't get outside and walk barefoot you know there's lots of ways to do it the, the, there's make a list to bring earth in just down and make a list and and do a checklist on that to amplify your earth or bring in something beautiful and luxurious to really feel what it feels like to be in that manifest of joy and comfort and all of that if you need to bring fire in move your body in some way say the things you need to say be blunt be expressive you know be be the stand for the underdog in some way you can do it you can bring any part of that into your life in some way every single day yeah and we want to complicate it we want to <laughs> 
we always want to complicate everything, but we need to learn that things can be simple. Things actually really are very simple underneath it all. It's all of the gunk and the layers that society and culture have piled up on top of us that complicate it. If you just dial it back a little bit and you're like, well, Savannah, I don't know anything about the elements. I don't know anything about astrology. How am I supposed to figure out, for one, what elements I need more of? And for two, how am I supposed to figure out how to get those elements in my life? And it's it very if you sit still for a second and just look around at where you are, you can pretty intuitively figure out what's earth, what's air, what's because everything's related to some sort of element. And then there's totally apps that we can get you to plug your birthday in to that'll tell you which ones you are. There you go. Or you can reach out to an astrologer and have that conversation and mm -hmm. have them help you guide through it and uh, and talk with you. And and I think it's really important sometimes absolutely go and and do it yourself i encourage that all the time go look at this go look at that but if you've never done it with someone that really knows what they're doing do it it will change your way of seeing yourself change your way of seeing how to work with yourself with the energies that come up with the experiences that come up in life and it will give you kind of a foundation and a guide and it does absolutely it is a uh, an affirmation, a permission slip, all of those things. But it's also an outside perspective. It's a little bit of a cheat because it's looking inside, but it lets you see you from an observer point of view, which we so often are, we struggle at because we are who we are, you know, as even as an intuitive or someone else, intuitives will often go to other intuitives to get information because they struggle with seeing objectively as an observer, what's going on in their own life. Same thing there, go do and be, but always know that it's great to have an outside perspective and to show you, you know, something that you might not have even known was something to look at in your life you know looking at uh, the your purpose your life lessons things like that oh my gosh yeah I didn't see that in my life if I lean into that a little better this might really move my career forward in a way I didn't see it or my my simple acceptance of who I am and knowing that I fought against that for her most of my life it's so funny I had a conversation with a friend who I, I read her chart and and I've helped her uh, learn a little bit because she wanted to after doing the chart. She's like, I'd like to be able to kind of look at my kids and do that. Can I? Can you help me? And I did. And she said, actually, you know, she was dating a twin. And she said, I don't get it. How are they so different? If they're twins and they have the same, you know, within minutes of each other, the same influences and things. I said, I'll bet. Let me let me ask you this. I knew who she was dating and kind of the situation. I said, okay, he's like this. I said, is the other one like this? And I explained all these other little versions. And she said, yeah, that's, that's what he did. That's how he is. And I said, because he's still in the same energy, but he's leaning into the difficulties of it. He's leaning into the hard side of it instead of going with it as an energetic flow and saying, Ooh, I do have a lot of air if I do this, it's going to, you know, you're going to flow easier and I can use the earth here to amplify that, or I can use the fire to make it bigger. He's going in and saying, you know, he's fighting against that and going, I don't want to talk about, it. I don't do that, you know, and, and, and being kind of the petty person on this side or saying all the things that he shouldn't be saying when he knows better. So he's leaning into the difficulty. And we can do that in life. You know, Capricorns are, are, they can be amazing at getting things done, doing the thing, leading the way. They can be lazy as heck too. They can be the one that's lounging all around and just whining about everything and not, you know, they just don't want to go do the job. Same energy. They're just leaning in it differently because they are not accepting that they have the ability to really move in a way that's incredible. And when they just start looking at it as, oh, oh, that's what that is. And I can move in it a different way. Wow. 
opens all kinds of doors. Yeah, there's there's positive and negative in everything. You know, it's the yin and the yang. So you have to find the balance of the both. And we spend, because I like to try to say things like uh, helpful and unhelpful instead of good and bad, because good and bad are human constructs that we really get hung up on. And then we suppress the things that society says is bad. But when you look at it and you really dissect it from a subjective point of view, you an unbiased point of view, you find that like, it's just a tool. And for like money, for example, a lot of people, there's this whole uh, thought basis belief system that money is the root of all evil. And no, money is a tool that causes people like something doesn't cause money's not doing nothing. Sorry, that's misspeak on me. Uh, money's just sitting there waiting to be used. And then people come along and use it for either good or bad. And just like that, you can everything in our life is neutral. It's two sides of one coin. Um, and we use the words positive and negative for think of it like a magnet, the balance is in the middle, but you need both the positive side and the negative side for the magnet to exist at all. And reality is the same way. So yeah, leaning into the to one side or the other is a choice that we have in all of the things. It is, it is. And if we want things to move smoother and we're aware of what we can lean into to help that continue and move us, you know, to the best part of our life, to being in that best version. If you're aware of it, you can consciously do it and work with the subconscious of moving that in a direction. If you're not aware and you're just struggling with the challenges of dipping into one side, dipping into it, why is this always happening? Why am I always having this challenge that comes up of where, you know, I, I want to really dig into the details, but I'm worrying about the the bigger picture and, and what's going on. Why can't I bring those two together? If you understand Hey, that's this that's happening in your life. This is why this is you're so detailed. You have Virgo and whatever. And and that's the detail oriented. And then you have this opposite side that that's really, you know, Sagittarius or something, you know, whatever it is. You have this other thing going on that's making you look at the bigger picture of things. You can do both. You know, you can still be the party guest that goes around and sees how everyone's doing and knowing that you've set the whole party up to flow in a certain way and it's going to go wonderfully. And the overall picture of it is good. You don't have to swing into one side or the other. You know, you can use them both to your benefit and and bring that middle ground in does that mean you're not going to lean into one sometimes lean into the other no but if you're using the best energy on both of those sides it's going to turn out wonderfully you know if you're dipping back and forth and you're kind of dragging into the the lower energy of them it's going to be a constant battle it's not going to be super fun and that's your choice yeah, we, we find ourselves wanting to be consistently the same all the time. We want to hang out in that balanced area all the time. And we feel like if we go too far on one side or too far on the other side, then we're doing something wrong. And the truth is the mat of the matter is that life in and of itself is a constant teeter-totter. We're, we're going to be going back and forth and we hit the middle. We just want to try to hit the middle of the balanced area as often as we can. And that's, you know, that's as good as we're going to get. And that's OK. And because we're, we're not perfect and we're human and we're never going to be perfect. So we have to learn how to be a little less rigid and be OK with the with the waves that come and go and toss us from one side to the other. Yeah, I often think of it as a roller coaster, you know, so many people, um, they think that uh, we have to, when, we, when we're supposed to be experiencing emotions, which can be a struggle for a lot of people to go, oh, okay, I'm going to take the time to, to, to feel the emotions to do this. You don't have to sit for a long period of time in an emotion. We're not meant to sit for a long period of time in an emotion. It's like that roller coaster ride where you're constantly in flow, you're constantly moving, and you're going from fear to excitement 
to, ooh, you know, it's relief, all of these things that are going on. What happens is sometimes it gets stuck in the bottom, like at the bottom of one of those things and you're kind of just swaying back and forth. That's when depression kicks in, anxiety kicks in, overwhelm kicks in because you, you think, oh, and, and you're stuck in this emotion, which is a whole nother discussion around like subconscious and all that, but you're stuck in this emotion when all you really needed to do was take a moment, allow the emotion to flow through you experience it it doesn't it can be that much right there as long as it took me to say that and feel it and go okay and then it releases and goes will it come back maybe take a moment let it go however many times during the day to do that but just the awareness just bringing yourself the awareness and allowing it to flow through you is the process that we're meant to live in we're never meant to be void of uh, difficulties or problems or, or any of that. We're meant to experience it, move on from it. Same thing with joy and happiness and all that. We're meant to experience it. We're going to move through it into something else. We might have frustration. We might have anger. We might have sadness. As long as you are not staying in it, it's okay. It's okay to feel all the crazy, amazing emotions that are in this world because that's who we are as people. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Be aware of it. In that awareness, you won't sink into the difficult places. Yeah, awareness is all of the job, 100%. Just being aware of everything all of the time. There's no other tools that you need. There, There's... Knowledge and tools help. They make it easier. Uh, they're there to be used, you know, but the awareness of who you are, how you are, why you are the way you are, why others are the way they are, uh, the past experiences and what growth they brought to you. Because again, we are, it's nothing, nothing is consistent. The only constant is change. And the sooner that we can accept that, the sooner we can have a whole lot more fun on our roller coaster because in the, instead of trying to stop it, because that's what a lot of us are trying to do is trying to stop the roller coaster, which you can't. And you're, all you're going to do is get run over or get dragged along, like, boom, 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 like pulled across the tracks and cause more damage. The more you fight it, you have to learn how to flow with it instead of fighting it. And the the you know the downs are temporary and and i love the roller coaster you know people we're a roller coaster analogy is something a lot of us hear a lot uh in relation to life and whatnot but how many of us actually sit there and think about the analogy and compare piece by piece the roller coaster to the analogy of life for example when you get into that little rut in the bottom little valley and you sit there for a little bit uh the track then it has to hook into the the what do you call the the seats Rails. The, yeah and and it like just drags you up little by little and it's so slow going to the top that's the same thing as digging yourself out of depression you know you have to work a little bit harder in that moment but once you finally peek out and you got to trust that you will peek out then it's smooth sailing for a while until you hit another valley and then you got to tick 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 all the way back up to the top again and but this time it's probably going to be easier because you did it the first time uh instead of fighting it you know uh you're you're like okay well fighting it just makes it take longer to get to the top if i just take a breath and then just start the work and then you get up there and then you've built strength and you've grown and that you know how you grow and how you build strength that's um not only physical wise, but also uh, mentally and emotionally. So these things, these patterns that pop back up to teach us the same lesson that we just did. And, and that's frustrating, right? You know, the, you get the same patterns over and over again, but you get a, you get better at handling it every time. For example, like uh, if you have that one family member that just pushes every button that you have and you can't stand to be around them. Well, getting through that with awareness 
and intentionality and purposefulness uh, this first time will make you it'll make it easier to handle them the second time and it'll make it easier to handle them the third time because you're learning their patterns in contrast to your own and then you can predict and prepare for the next interaction and meeting it's it's the same across everything in life it is and what people don't realize is that you know they say oh i'm i'm backwards sorry i'm learning the same lesson i'm learning no you're not actually it's not a circle it's a spiral mm -hmm. and you're always in a different place when you come back to a situation, you are not the same person that dealt with it the last time. You are not the same person that, that has dealt with it the last several times. And actually, if you see something continuously coming up, I would say it's time to go have a conversation with your subconscious because uh, if that's the, the same thing that you're coming up against, coming up against, coming up against, then it's time to address it. You know, you're giving, you're being given hints and instruction and before it does come in and say, hey, we're going to stop you in your tracks right now because it will. And, and you're going to face this and deal with this before it gets to that. Go in and start doing the work at, at that subconscious level to, to hit the reset button, to clear those things so that then you come up and out of that and you're moving with momentum and confidence and, and in a way that says, I can do this. And even if you have things that come at you. You have that core at that point. When you hit that reset button, you go in and clear those things. You have the core that says, I'm okay, no matter what's going on around me. It can be wild. All these things and the things that do trigger you, like that family member before. Now you come into the situation and go, wow. And you see it from a whole different perspective. And there's no connection, emotional soft spot to be hit anymore because you've cleared it mm -hmm. it's gone and that's that's the magic right there of going at the subconscious level and changing those things yeah things that trigger us are an opportunity to heal cleanse let go of something that's causing us issues and you'll find life is a whole lot better on the other side but again you have to flow with it instead of fighting it Right. You, if you, if you are in movement, like I said, with that energy, you know, it, I always think of it as like a, a flow that kind of comes and goes and comes and goes when you're in that, you can, you have the momentum and you have the ability to move through those low points and you're going to go right back up the other side and move in a new direction. And you decide in that moment, Oh, am I moving in a good direction? And you can, you can, you can actually feel it inside yourself, you know, fear and excitement come up as the same emotion and we decide I'm moving into fear or I'm moving into excitement. You can feel that and go, Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about. And you can make the choice to go into that interest, to go into the excitement, to go into a different direction than you've ever gone before. When you go in and you reset at, at, a, at that deepest level, you come to that new zero point where forever going forward, things are going to be different. Does that mean you need to learn to navigate it a little bit differently? Probably, because now you have things that are not stopping you in your tracks. You don't have the that overwhelming feeling of, you know, anxiety that comes in when you have to go around people or when you have to go do something, speak at something. You don't have that coming up. So it's like, ooh, I don't I don't. I don't feel that. Now what? Now what do I do? And you move forward in a different way. Same thing physically. Things we don't realize that the, our physical is just as connected to the to the energetic and the and the um, uh, subconscious can change that. The subconscious is running you physically anyway. So when you are uh, working with that, you can change migraines, get rid of migraines, IBS, chronic fatigue, all of those things come into play. Are those important at an energetic level too? Yes, because it's telling us, you know, if we're constantly in depression, something's not right. We need to do something. And if we're moving in the way that we need to, to clear that energetically, but it's not working, that's a signal for us to go into our subconscious, 
work with that, hit the reset button, and then we can come out and use all of those amazing gifts and even the challenges in a way that work wonders in our life. If you're stuck in some of that stuff, it is hard to navigate all of the energy that, that we experience in this world, mm -hmm. air, fire, water, uh, earth, all of them. We're like, I, I, I'm doing okay with this, but I keep getting stuck in this. Maybe you keep getting stuck in that because there's something stuck back in that subconscious and all of those wonderful files in our subconscious brain that it's operating on that's no longer serving you. You can go in and clear that. And then working in that energy is so easy and so manageable and so fun. Yeah, and it becomes easier the more you go because it does seem really, really complex at first. And what do you mean um, this thing that happened to me when I was six is what's causing my migraines now? What? That doesn't make any sense to me. What do you mean? Because we're, we didn't have the science to really back up all of these ancient teachings until now. And we needed the science to understand because, uh, and I could dissect that from a history standpoint and why we landed in such a physical need for to need to be able to see, hear, hear, feel, taste, touch, anything to make it real. But the stagnant energy, ev everything is energy. Everything, everything, everything is energy. Everything's made out of the same particles and that don't even touch. We just have the illusion that the desk is real, is solid, and there's scientifically no reason we can't put our hand through it, and yet we can't. So working with that stuff that barely makes any sense, um, you're made of the same things that the desk is made out of, and it's all swirling energy, and we need that movement of the energy like the water you know we like if a if a river gets dammed up then things collect trash get, collects and and um toxins from other things get all you know you've seen little pools in rivers i don't know i i do a lot of kayaking so i really get the water analogies but um You'll get these little stagnations where the water gets trapped and it doesn't flow and it just stagnates in this little pool off to the side. And it almost always has this gross film over the top of it because things aren't clear filtering out. And um, your body, the energy does the exact same thing. So to clear that out, movement is a wonderful thing you just have to keep moving you have to keep moving and that means not only physically it definitely means physically but it also means emotionally and mentally uh, consciously uh, being aware you're always moving forward in some way or another and I think a lot of us sometimes confuse that movement for um so we try to run away from our problems and feelings and emotions. And, and you can't do that. That's not the type of movement we mean. Like a lot of people be like, uh, okay, I see that and it's over there, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to, I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to keep going. And you can't really do that. You have to look at it, address it kind of like, um, being a parent and your kid is causing some issues you can't turn a blind eye to it and hope it goes away you have to look at it and be like hey what are you doing and why well here's why we're not going to do that and here's a direction that we're going to take that's better you have to do the kind of the same thing with your own belief systems and your thoughts because your thoughts and your belief systems create your emotions and your feelings, which create your physical body, which can lead to health or sickness or bad relationships or good relationships or good money management skills or poor money management skills or literally anything. Yeah, and you can change any of those things. Mm -hmm. And some of them are going to be easier for some people than others. You know, that's that's the whole process of like w with the with the elements and things like that. Some people are going to be easier with body, you know, moving their body. People have a lot of fire, rest in movement. 
it feels better for them to be moving and doing things. They're the ones that will clean the house to just rest and feel good or go for the walk, you know, and, and people who are really emotional at the emotional level have a lot of water. They're going to really feel good getting in water, literally. You know, I tell people, if you're struggling with that emotional process, go put your feet in some water. If you can't get into a pool or a lake or a river, do something where you're connected with water. And and, and so it's, it really is connecting with the, that energy sometimes, which sounds crazy, but it's so simple. Like we said in the beginning, it makes the difference. And, and if you're struggling with something, you know, you said you, you can't ignore. Exactly right. If you're, and I'm going to, again, put this at the subconscious level, we have parts of us that are created from when we are tiny, 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 like even be when we're born and things and and things can be anchored in situations are anchored in which create those beliefs which create the way that we move in the world which create sometimes blocks because our subconscious is always its main job is to keep us safe mm -hmm. In keeping us safe, that can get uncomfortable for us sometimes because it, it might be doing things, throwing things in our way that don't feel good, like fears or the overwhelm or a physical thing that all of a sudden shows up. And I often speak to it, use a, I use a puppy, you know, where a puppy comes up to you, you get a puppy and it wants attention and wants attention, wants attention. If you don't give it attention, it's going to go pee on your rug and chew up your chews and do all the bad things. If you give it attention, it's going to work with you, be with you, be a companion. That's your subconscious. Your subconscious will throw things at you where it feels like they're peeing on your rug you know, and it's like, oh my goodness, what's happening, you know, and, and you have the anxiety, you have the, the panic attacks, you have something that's showing up in your life. And it's like, I, what the heck, we need to give some attention to those things and hit that reset button and then work in the way that we're meant to work in this world. Absolutely. I, I use a puppy analogy for the same way. Sometimes uh, I also tell people that I, you know, just like you need to pet your puppy on the head every now and then until it, it's doing a good job, you got to do that to yourself as well. And, you know, if, you're, if your puppy has some tummy issues with certain foods, then you're going to have to rework their diet and find a better food that works for them. Uh, we're so good at taking care of other people and our pets, and we don't always, that doesn't always translate back to taking care of ourselves. If you you have to take care of yourself the exact same way you would take care of your your dog or your grandmother or your uh, child, you know, whatever, whatever have you that you take really good care of. Um, your car, you know, you got to make sure the oil's changed. You got to keep everything nice and clean or else it's going to feel gross in there. And it, there's there's a lot of analogies we could use, but the better you take care of yourself, the easier these things are going to be to interpret and figure out and learn and find a better direction to move forward in. Absolutely. And I love how we got on the subject of uh, the elements in astrology specifically. Most people, I've had tons of people come to me because my brand is earth and water. So I'm earth and water all over the place, earthandwater.co and on my Instagram handles and all of that. But um, it came from astrology. It was the earth signs and water signs because me and my husband both are earth and water signs, respectively, and our sun and moon. Uh, we're both Tauruses. And then I'm a Pisces moon and he's a Scorpio moon. So, and that's exactly that energy is what translated into what everything I do is about. It's the bringing the, the physical, the tangible, the practical in with the woo-woo, the magic, the depth, the intuition, the subconscious and connecting them both to find a balance and moving forward. Um, all the elements are important, but those are the two that I for sure connect with the most. The yeah, the air and the fire. I'm I don't know. We could we could continue to dissect in a personal manner, but we don't need to. 
Yeah. And somebody else will connect totally with, with one of those or both of those, or, you know, they, they might feel like, oh, I think I kind of do all of that in different ways. And that's fine. That's great. That probably means that you're working wonders in your life and you're really in the energy of that. But usually there's going to be an influence in your life that's, that is standing out. It can be different for everyone. Oftentimes people will say, and I don't, I don't connect with my sun sign. I don't, you know, doesn't feel like that. Well, maybe you have a, a Saturn energy that's really big and expansive in some way in your life that really is kind of directing you in a way. And that's what you feel connected to. Or maybe you have four other planets that are in something else. That's a big influence, you know, that that's going to maybe show you how it shows up in your life in a way and you're you're really feeling into those other energies more than any particular parts of your sun sign but if you look right if you look closely you will still find parts of that because again that's your base layer that's the you know you're not going to live in your life without some qualities of those showing up yeah and if you're looking for an astrologer uh, there's a lot of people out there doing astrology that don't actually know astrology. So I need you to, I need everybody to know that that's a thing. Use a little discernment. Uh, you probably don't want to find your, the Instagram account that you've been following for three years that just posts uh, Tauruses today will be like this or um, Gemini's look out for yada yada this week. Um that's a hard no. <laughs> a lot of these yeah. are out there just uh just trying to get views and numbers. Yeah, people are often I you know I they'll say oh I'm this or I'm that and it's like that's great but I would want to know so much more you know to to really look at who you are as a whole person as all of the energies combine i want to see what kind of cake you are with you know all the little or do you have sprinkles or do you you know just get down to business cake is it dense is it fluffy what's going on and and everyone is so different and so wonderful and yet every part of astrology that i pull in is at that kind of scientific level i'm going to look at here's you know the the planet that's there here's the house that it's a part of so in those combinations i'll bet you feel this kind of an influence in this area of your life because it makes a difference someone might have uh you know their their moon in uh a water sign but it's and someone else over here has their moon in a water sign but they're in different houses and that influences. So you have to look at all the different, it's like, you know, doing a math problem. You're not just going to take one number and go, Oh, there it is. There's, there's the answer. No, you have to see that plus this minus that equals this, you know, and you're putting it all together, a little string of lights. That's beautiful and amazing. And I'm not just going to concentrate on one thing. I'm going to look at them all. And again, you know, intuition comes into it when I'm doing a chart because someone might have an almost exact same chart as someone else, but there's kind of nuances in there that make a difference because there is this little something different on how it's showing up in your life. And it is you, you like those twins, exactly the same charts. One's leaning into one thing, one's leaning into the energy of something else. So they're very different in how they approach life. And if I look at that and go, are you, are you leaning in this way or do you see it showing up this way? That gives me a clue to say, okay, we're going to, we're going to talk about it in this way. But if I just said, here's what should be happening according to this, that you might feel really off and go, Ooh, that's not me at all. You know? So I want to know which which way do you see it showing up in your life this way or this way and then we can take off and run a little bit and go okay let's talk about that and have some fun with it yeah because it's again an introspective tool and free will is always a factor in that it is always yeah. we we choose we choose our happiness we choose our life we choose our path and we choose whether to make that a little bit easier or make it a mountain climb difficult thing every day it doesn't have to be that way 
Yeah, not to say that things don't happen that make it more difficult. You know, our, our astrology chart is just like any other thing in life where you're dealt a hand of cards and then it's up to you how to play those cards. You know, you can play them strategically. You can play them to the best of your abilities, but you still have a set hand to work with nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, we all have, you know, and we're meant to work with that and and draw in all of the other things. But why not? If you are handed a lot of earth, why not work in that energy and, and really develop it and bring it in in ways? Do you still need uh, water? Yes. Do you still need fire or sunshine or, you know, that energy? Yes. Do you still need the communication about what's going on or the ideas of what to create next? Yes. But why not run with what you've got mm -hmm. and really amplify it? Yeah. Working with what you have rather than fighting against it again, you know, it's always an ebb and flow. So this has been wonderful. It was a really good hour tell everybody how they can find you and what you have to offer and anything else you want to plug. You bet. Uh, they can find me with my name. It's Laura Ordeal. It looks like Ordeal, L-A-U-R-A-O-R-D-I-L-E. And that's my website, lauraordeal.com. And that will uh, give you a lot of information about what I do. I'm on Facebook under my name, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I have a group on Facebook called The Change Gang. And that's a free group to come join me in. And I also have a podcast called The Change Gang. So you can hear all about it. Uh, if you go back a little bit, I did actually dive in. It's kind of a fun series that I did. I dove into all the different signs and how they show up in each planet. And so that was kind of fun. So if you go look for those, you'll see you can look up Taurus or Virgo or any of those. And, and it will tell you if you have Virgo in Sun and in the Moon and in Saturn and Mercury, it goes through all of them. So it's kind of fun. Uh, tell us your big three. What is, what is your sun, moon, and rising signs? Um, I uh, have uh, Gemini, Gemini, and my rising is, my rising is interesting, um, but it is Sagittarius. The one thing, so people will talk about, I have to say this real quick, people talk about cusps with astrology. I don't deal with that very much. The one time that you might have uh, like a flow or a little bit of an influence from another sign, it's like, oh, it's on the cusp. No, the one time you're going to have that influence is if it's at zero degrees, because it's a little bit like the door is still open. So the, the, the breeze is blowing through before you actually get through the door and close it into that next sign. So anytime that's at zero degrees, you might have the influences of both signs. And my rising sign happens to be at zero degrees. So, so it's a little bit like, hmm, which one do I lean into more? You know, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius. So that's a little bit of a, a fun fact there that I, that's how I learned and, and I found to be true with people but i have i have a lot of gemini in my chart i have a lot of air and uh so i can i can talk all day long <laughs> <laughs> that's good though uh yeah cusps are a um pet peeve of a lot of real astrologers so if someone tells you that you're a cusp because I, I, people think it's so common and it's not because the the zodiacs change at a specific time of day and that's why cusps aren't actually a thing. It depends on what time uh, you are born. Um, I I have a similar issue with my rising sign, though. Uh, for years, my rising sign showed up as an Aquarius, and it made sense. It totally tracked. And then one day, I plugged it in again. I like lost my chart. I couldn't find it. Like I had it saved on my computer and on my phone and suddenly it was just gone. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I plugged everything back in. Same numbers, I swear. And then now it says that my rising sign is Capricorn. So I always make a joke that we shifted timelines <laughs> because uh, Capricorn also makes complete and utter sense, but they bleed into one another anyway, a little bit. Like I was, uh, uh, I called my husband the other day. I was like, um, 
April Taurus. And he was like, what does that mean? And I was like, April Tauruses are more Aries than they are Taurus. Like, you know, the rest of us Taurus or the May Tauruses over here fit your uh, stereotypical Taurus. You know, we're sleepy. We want the luxuries. We want food. Um, and then the he's an so he's an April Taurus. So he's more Aries. So he like stubborn, he, more stubborn. <laughs> like go go go. Uh, he he doesn't take naps. What kind of Taurus doesn't take naps? <laughs> But yeah, they uh, they bleed into one another a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. And I hope you do too. It, it was great to have a conversation with you. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. And if anybody wants their chart read, reach out to her. Yeah. Yeah.